Kitco Mining special coverage of the Gold Forum Americas is brought to you by Metalla Royalty and Streaming. Velo Mining has taken the copper exploration world by storm and has raised buckets of money at a time when most junior explorers are struggling. This is Paul Harris with Kitco Mining at the Gold Forum Americas in Colorado Springs. And joining me today is President and CEO, Jamie Beck. Jamie, welcome to Kitco. Thanks, Paul. Always a pleasure to be here. Well, thank you for coming. Now, Philo and your Philo, the sole project in San Juan province in Argentina, has been one of the most uh, exciting copper gold discoveries um, over the past couple of years. You've issued a number of long intercepts of high grade material over an ever increasing area. Um, you've been one of the most successful companies. You're able to raise large amounts of equity. What's the secret sauce? Uh, good asset. Yeah, it, it, it all comes down to having uh, you know, having a, a quality, world-class tier one asset. And uh, we're fortunate that we've we've uh, discovered something special at Filo del Sol. And I think what, what we're seeing in the markets right now is a reflection of that. Uh, good projects uh, are able to move forward because, because they're attracting investment dollars. Yeah. Over the recent months, you've continued to expand Filo towards the north. And recently you put out a press release suggesting or indicating that you can possibly be expanding to the east, maybe a parallel structure. Um, it must be, will be very exciting. It is, yeah. It, uh, I think through some of the discoveries we made last year, specifically to the north in an area that we call Bonita, our original geological interpretation was that it may have been sort of a separate new zone or a, a new sort of porphyry intrusive. And through the geophysics work, through the drill bit, what, what we're learning at Philo is in fact that there are uh, no zones. It, it seems to be continuously mineralized north to south now from uh, Tambrius in the south through Bonita to the north, which is about five, five kilometers. Uh, and then uh, excitingly, uh, geophysics as well as the drill bit, we, we, we think we found a, a new trend along the eastern part of the deposit. We are contemplating an underground exploration at it, and as part of that, had done some geotechnical drilling along the center line of that uh, of that at it, and and sure enough, one of the one of the geotechnical holes well mineralized and and part of that eastern trend. So excited to get out and explore there as well. So with exploration, you're obviously looking for new things, and you're continually adjusting your assumptions and the model and things of that nature. But um, as the CEO of the company, does that make it sort of difficult to plan when uh, you know new things keep coming up, and you know that needs some capital, that needs some capital, it's getting bigger and bigger. Um, you just keep going with it, or you know do you adjust your strategy at all? Uh, it, it's keep going with the drill bit. You know we are connecting zones of mineralization that previously were, were not thought to be connected. We are drilling uh, holes within the main part of the deposit that are building confidence in the resource that we, we already have. And we continue to find these, these new styles of mineralization. And it's really the, the goal right now um, is, to, is to try and get a sense of just where the, the size and scale of the deposit is. Um, you know, as a, as a CEO, of course, I've got a large technical team that, that looks after that. So strategically and, and in the background, what the, you know, Adam and, and myself and the, and the management team were signing CAs and engaging corporates and trying to make sure that, that uh, you know, everybody is aware of, of Filo del Sol and, and how exciting this project could be if it ultimately comes to something that we want to, um, to partner with or, or joint venture. And then uh, another part of the job is advancing the project, engineering, uh, environmental, metallurgical test work, social community work, such that uh, you know we can we can move it forward uh, and advance the project. Uh, our pre-feasibility study that that we announced in uh, twenty uh, January of twenty nineteen is a perfect example of of you know we've got something here that 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 this company could move forward with as well. Okay, and Adam Lundin is who you're referring to yes. there. Okay, we've spoken in the past about how Filo del Sol uh, could become uh, one of the five largest undeveloped copper deposits in the world. What will it take to get there? And what's the potential timeline on you being able to show that? We've already got, uh, you know, I think, a pretty good view on, uh, on the size potential, uh, being able to accomplish that task. And so what it's gonna take to get there is just additional drilling to give us uh, the drill density and, and confidence in the overall resource on some of the areas that have been more newly discovered, specifically that, uh, that Aurora to Benita gap, which we're, we're drilling right now. We'll have three holes into that. 
but that's uh, three holes over a, over a one kilometer or two kilometer uh, distance. So we'll need to get a handful of more uh, additional holes on those sections to really fill in the geological picture before we'd be able to categorize that as resource. Okay. Now you mentioned the, the 2019 pre-feasibility study. You've continued to grow the, the, the size potential of the project considerably since then. So when can perhaps we be looking at a, an update to the project economics and project pre-feasibility? That really dovetails after the, the resource, Paul. Uh, you know, that, that PFS remains uh, valid. It's a nice, smallish open pit that sits on top and, and then you just sort of continue mining through that as you moved into the, the bigger sulfide resource at depth. So we'll, we'll start thinking about uh, what that looks like in terms of a project and, and putting thoughts around uh, advancing some studies there once we've uh, got a better sense of uh, just the, the size and scale of the resource that we're dealing with. Okay. Now you've been successful in raising very large sums of money in a, in a very tough market. What a message are you getting from those investors? And you also mentioned you've been talking to a lot of copper producers. What is the message coming through from them? What do they want to see? Uh, they want to see a, a fantastic copper asset being discovered and, and in a world where there is a dearth of uh, good quality new copper assets coming online. Um, you, you know, it, it takes a long time to move these projects forward. And so uh, what we benefit from uh, from our shareholder base is, is some patience and perseverance. They know uh, that it's, it's going to be uh, a process in order to define these world class deposits. Um, and that's and that's been great to have that support from the Lundines, from BHP, and from, from other big shareholders on the register. Um, and, and and clearly, you know what they're seeing in the industry is uh, uh, declining head grades from the existing uh, copper assets. Substantial capital going to be required over the near term in, in, in terms of just maintaining output, you know, broadly in the in the world of copper production. So. Uh, defining and developing and, uh, and and ultimately proving out new big copper resources that could have an impact on the future is, is critical at the moment. Okay. Now, as you mentioned, the, the copper market, there's a supply deficit coming. You've got growing demand from energy transition applications, yet the copper price itself is remaining stubbornly below $4 a pound. Yeah. And, you know, you, you're speaking with a lot of copper majors. What, what is their thinking about, okay, we need, we need to, there's more demand, we need to build up more supply. What is the message you're getting from them about, you know, at, what are the conditions are under which they will look to make those investments? I think we've seen that the past decade or so where, you know, shareholders of those bigger companies have been focused on share buybacks and returning capital, um, you know, returning capital to shareholders. And there hasn't been that uh, appetite for risk and appetite for growth. And I guess more recently, I'm starting to to see that in our discussions. Uh, it, it's looking like some of the majors are, are prepared to maybe take a little bit more risk in thinking of how they're going to build out their growth projects and the, and the pipeline for the future. So, uh, you know, copper price certainly plays a role in that. Most, uh, most industry analysts are projecting, you know, that we're going to be in some form of supply demand def deficit in the copper space. Uh, arguments over when that happens. Is it, you know, 2025, 2027, but something's coming. And uh, the, the big companies are positioning themselves now to, to take advantage of that. And, and that means that the work and the investment needs to happen now uh, if, it, if it's going to have an impact uh, when, when hopefully we do see a bit of a, a price spike above $4. Is there a concern about how what we can loosely say the quality of the projects because um, you know it doesn't seem to be any real slam dunk project out there yeah and, and to me that's a bullish case for the uh, for the price of copper it's going to mean that if we do want to bring on new production it's going to be slightly more marginal projects that are lower grade and are going to require a, a higher hurdle rate uh, or a higher copper price sorry to meet that that hurdle rate and investment decision okay now there's various Lunding Group public companies active in the Vicuña Belt, which extends from Chile into Argentina. Um, and of course, Filo de Sol is in that belt. What is the potential bigger picture here? And when may we start to see that unfold? This land package was originally acquired by the, the Lundines in the late 1990s. And, and when, when we first went in there on mule and, and uh, you know, reconnaissance soil sampling campaigns, there were 12 or 16 uh, initial 
targets or anomalies that, that looked pretty interesting. And I think if you, if you now take a step back as to where we are today, more broadly in that district, five major discoveries. There's, there's Casarones, which Lending Mining has recently acquired to our north. Uh, NGX holds Los Alados and, and the new Luna Wasi discovery that they've made, which is quite exciting. Uh, Lending Mining with the Jose Maria project and, and Filo del Sol. So of those 12 to 16 original uh, soil anomalies, we've, we've made, you know, there's five big discoveries. Are, are these the best five and, and what else is out there? And that's what's super exciting about this district. I think we've got uh, projects at, at various stages, so uh, some construction ready like Jose Maria, some in production like Casarones and, uh, and, and development and exploration assets that we hold in, in uh, Philo and as, as well as NGX. So it's, it's going to be really exciting to see how it all pulls together. I don't have a crystal ball, but you know, ultimately I think there's likely to be some kind of regional consolidation. It's likely to take uh, you know, partners, and, and I, I'm sure that the, the Lundin family wants to hang on to as much as, as they possibly can. It's, it's rare that you are in the driver's seat of such a world-class emerging copper district. Um, I admit that's perhaps a, an unfair question for you. It's perhaps something better directed towards uh, Ash. Exactly. <laughs> okay, so um, what can we expect to see next from Fila? What are the sort of big catalysts coming? Drill results uh, remain our, our, our primary market, uh, you know, facing info. It's uh, as we fill in the gaps uh, of the known resource and build confidence in the, the, the mineralization that's already there, as we look towards uh, uh, building out areas that have, uh, have yet to be explored uh, to the south in and below uh, Tamboreas and the Philo part of the deposit as we move to the north towards Benita, filling in that Aurora Benita uh, gap area. And now uh, new styles of mineralization on, on the eastern, eastern trend. So as the weather improves in South America, we'll start looking at uh, spreading the drills a, a further afield and testing some of those uh, eastern targets as well. Okay, to wrap up, Jamie, hopes and concerns the company, the project, and the copper sector over the next 12 to 18 months. What's that? We're, listen, we're in a fantastic place. We've got uh, arguably one of the most exciting copper discoveries in, in quite some time. We continue to learn so much from the drill bit, which is uh, reinforcing the value of what we've got in the ground. Uh, it's exciting to be able to, to have sort of the, the, the corporate development type discussions as we think about how to crystallize value and move the project forward, whether that's uh, Philo moving it forward itself, uh, some kind of partnership uh, or, or working with uh, the broader lending group of companies to see what makes sense in the area um, and then uh, advancing the project and, and, uh, and pushing on those three levers uh, is going to be pretty exciting as we drive value for, for Philo shareholders. Well, Jamie, it certainly sounds like you've got an exciting future ahead of you. Thanks, Paul. This is Paul Harris for Kitco Mining at the Gold Forum Americas in Colorado Springs. And if you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe. Kitco Mining special coverage of the Gold Forum Americas is brought to you by Metalla Royalty and Streaming.